Okay, welcome back to Year 11 Specialists. We're looking at simulations um, of st in statistics area of study. We're looking at uh, simulating some probability experiments and then later on some random sampling from a population. So this video we're going to be focusing on this random experiment. Say we've got um, n number of red balls and m number of blue balls and they are all in a bag together. Uh, this classic one. Yeah, and a ball is randomly selected and is replaced p number of times. So, riff replacement is important because it's a different problem than if it was done without replacement. Yes, without replacement is going to uh, involve conditional probability, but I think we're not ready to try and simulate that yet on Excel or a Google Sheets. Once we've done our simulation, we can start asking ourselves some questions such as, you know, things like, well, what's the uh, proportion of selecting, um, you know, Q number of red balls, or what's the most probable number of red balls selected, and so on. Okay, so let's get to it. Now, first off, in a Google Sheet, let's set up a new Google Sheet and give it a heading and set up some... He um, headings in our cells to give it this kind of structure. Okay, so we want a heading of the number of blue balls, the number of red balls, and then the total number of balls might be helpful as well. We're going to allocate this cell here and this cell there to where we can enter our cells. We can choose what number of uh, colored ball we'd like. And then we can put a little formula to work out what's the total number of balls in the bag. And then we can give ourselves a, f a little table that can, we can choose to how many times we want to simulate a, uh, a number of draws from the bag. So if we only want to draw two balls from the bag, then we're just going to use this part of the table. If we want to draw up to eight balls out of the bag, then we can use the whole lot. All right. So let's start it up. Let's start with some random number. Let's say we've got four blue balls and maybe five red balls. That's fine. So our total number of balls, we know it's nine. So let's add those two numbers. So we want that cell plus that cell. So let's just click. Make sure you always start with an equal sign before you put in a Google Sheet formula. There it is, nine. So now we can manually change. Let's say we want three blue balls and then it, it sorts it out accordingly. Seven balls now. All right. So let's set, uh, let's set up our first simulation using random number generator function. We're going to set up with a if statement. So we're going to say if, okay, the random rand function here is a random number that generates a probability equivalent to or a number between 0 to 1. Okay, and if this random number from 0 to 1, random probability number, is less than the probability, the proportion that we get for say the number of blue balls. So the proportion will be to divide or out of seven, the total number of balls in the bag. Okay, so if our probability is less than two out of seven, then that's referring to the probability associated with drawing a blue ball out of the bag. So in that case, then the true statement will be return a B for blue. Else, if it's false, so in other words the probability is greater than that number, then that's corresponding to the probability associated with drawing the number uh, drawing red balls out of a bag, which is five out of seven. So when then we're going to return a R for red ball. And there it is. So, you know, make that bold if you like, increase the font perhaps, okay, or decrease and center it to make it nice and pretty. All right, now we press Control R. Control R is our hotkey in Google Sheet and we can recalculate the formula. But just be careful going crazy with that because Google Sheet likes to think and it doesn't want to think too hard. It's only made by Google, remember that. All right, so let's say we want to draw a number of times. Let's say if I want to draw three balls from the bag, 
then I click and drag it across and you can see we've got problems, errors. So let's have an understanding of what's happened. And this is a common mistake that I want to do, illustrate in working with spreadsheets is what's happened to my formula when I clicked and dragged. Okay, so this one seems right. That's all in the right place. That's all in the right place. What about this formula that's been copied to this cell? Ah, now it's moved the cell reference across. And that's what happens when you click and drag uh, cells that have formulas. It drags the, the referencing cells in the formulas across as well. So we don't want that to happen. So what we have to do is fix the, the cell references to the cell we want. And we use that using dollar signs. So we want a dollar sign in front of the column, dollar sign in front of the row on both cell references that we have selected. Okay, so now it's not going to move from those two cells, D1 and H1. So if I click and drag now, there we go, and we did it. And press the little control R, and we can recalculate, and there's the, the outcomes that we observe, random outcomes that, we've, that have occurred by drawing the number of balls out of the bag. So every time, we keep in mind, this is a situation when the balls are drawn from the bag and then replaced, put back into the bag, and then drawn uh, uh, again. So each time it's being replaced. We're not going to illustrate when they're le left out of the bag at this stage. All right, so the next important thing is to set up a counting um, number. We want to perhaps count how many times we observe, say, a blue ball being drawn out of the bag. So we're going to count the number of blue balls. So put a heading in. All right. Now perhaps we can wrap the text. Well, here we go. Let's center it and wrap the text in the cell. There it is. Okay. Now we want to be able to count how many blue balls are in this little uh, trial in this random experiment. So we're going to use a count if function. So equals go count if. We're going to select the range that we're interested in the counting. Now what we can do for convenience, we're going to select the whole lot. All possible up to, I've allocated for myself, up to eight uh, situations of drawing the ball out of the bag and putting it back in and repeating. All right. So even if I've I've only dragged off and up to five draw number of draws from the bag, then that's all as this function is going to count up to, it's from the one to five, and it's not going to worry about the six, seven, and eight. Now, what are we counting? Well, we want to count the number of blue balls that have been drawn, or the number of bees, for instance. There it is. So let's count the number of bees that are occurring. All right, so, <clears throat> and there it is. We got a one because there's only one blue ball that, that we drew there from the bag. Now I'll just press Control R to recalculate. And again, it's just one, there's one more time, Control R. For instance, ooh, we got, now we've got no blue balls. We've got all straight reds. What else we got? Okay, two blue balls and so on. And it's random, okay? So let's produce this random experiment a number of times and let's observe the trend or the, the relative proportion we'll get uh, in the long run over many different repeated experiments. So all we have to do now is click the whole lot, highlight the whole lot, like so, and press Control c Copy. Now let's go down as far as we can. Let's go down to the bottom. So to get down to the bottom row of our spreadsheet, we're going to press Control, Shift, and press the down key. Aha! And we've gone all the way down to a thousand. That's the last row in our Google spreadsheet and our Google sheet. So now let's copy the formulas all the way down. And that's going to re uh, repeat our random experiment. So Control V. There it is. Okay. Now we might say that's fine. 
I want to uh, have more accuracy in my relative frequency. I want my relative frequencies to resemble the true probability uh, more accurately. So to do that, well, we, we have to increase the number of trials we want in our simulation. So all you have to do here is um, we can add, here it is, there it is, we can uh, add some more uh, rows at the bottom. So if I hit add, then my last one is 2000. Now, instead of scrolling like this all the way get up top, I can press Control Shift up. And it gets me there, or Control up, there we go, Control up works. Control Shift up highlights. Alright, so the same thing, let's copy this down, this for these formulas down a little bit more. So press Control C to copy, and then Control Shift down, highlight that whole lot all the way down to 2000 and then control V paste. Alright, fantastic. Now we're cooking. We've got two up to 2000, approximately 2000 repeats in our simulation. 2000 repeated experiments. Alright, now let's get those relative frequencies happening. So, uh, up to the top, control up. Fantastic. Let's look at now what is the proportion of getting any number of blue balls okay um, in all our repeated random experiments so what are the different possibilities of getting um, the number of blue balls all right well number of blue balls put a heading in Headings are cool. Well, I could get the situation where I only draw red balls. Red, 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 red. Okay. Um, or I could get blue, 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 blue. All blue. So I can get zero up to five. So that's all the possibilities of the number of blue balls I could get. So if I'm drawing only five, then it's zero up to five. If I want to do look at the situation of more draws from the, the bag of the balls, then I can go up to eight as well. Let's allocate that in our space, in our spreadsheet. So we can explore way up to up to eight. All right. So now the last part is to, let's work out what is the relative frequency that we're going to get, which is the, the count of how many times the number of blue balls is a zero or a one out of the total which is our total number of trials in our simulation altogether. Okay, so we do that using a count if divide count function. So count if, okay, I want to count the whole lot. Now, my range starting at this cell, I5, and remember it goes all the way down to the very last row in this column and I put in now 2,000 rows so my very last one was 2,000 okay and that covers many trials which is really good now what am I counting here well I'm counting the first situation of the nut when the number of blue balls is a zero and that's just the cell reference above here and now I'm going to keep that variable so I when I click and drag it's going to change to L1 and then M1 and so on. Now I have to fix this range because I don't want to change that range so to fix it I'm going to use dollar signs. There it is. Okay. Now that gives me my total count of that outcome but I have to get a relative frequency so I go divide by the total possible trials all together. So now this is just a simple count function. And we've gone off the screen. So what I'll do, let's shimmy across a little bit. There we go. Oh, there it is. So we've got 386 situations uh, in our random experiment of just getting zero red balls or up to five, uh, zero blue balls or five red balls. Now, Let's finish this off to get our relative frequency, just the count function. And what are we counting? Well, we're, we're counting the range, the all the elements in the range in total. So how many were there? That's the question. Wasn't exactly 
2000 because we started at at row five and ended up at row 2000 so you know 1195 or something like that let it, google sheets are doing its thinking and there it is okay so now let's click and drag that all the way across because we want to count where the get the relative frequency when the number of blue balls are those other outcomes and there we have it okay let's just format our number change the number of decimal places we want to use maybe yep three decimal places is sufficient there we go you can see the last one has still got a one significant figure there that's okay now these ones are zeros because we have not considered at this point in time um, drawing it six times from the bag or seven times or eight times but that's something you might wish to explore all right so the very last thing we'd like to do is represent this frequency table this probability table graphically so let's just do the histogram up to um, right here for five blue balls and we're going to highlight that and insert a chart and there it is very nice indeed and that's what we want okay now the one thing I don't like is the default scale down the bottom let's edit the horizontal axes let's put a minute fix a minimum of zero and the maximum of five and that's much better whole number of blue balls and we don't want half of a blue ball <sighs> and we did it okay so now from there you can explore we can explore um, by changing the number of balls in the bag if we wanted five balls in the bag how does that change the distribution? Oh, it's centered because we've got the same number of blue balls as red balls. Okay, and if we have less red balls now, maybe two. Which way, which way the distribution goes? There we go, it's positively skewed that way, and so on. So we can, buy, we can explore the, the distribution of the number of balls, number of blue balls that we could possibly draw out of the bag and um, think about things like well what's the most probable outcome well we could most probable here you can see well the four is the number of blue balls out of um, drawing from drawing five balls from the bag we get four blue balls is the most likely situation interesting okay and we did it